You're listening to a proud member of the Fight Fans Radio Network. What's up? What's up? This is our uh, double digit. This is our 10th BJJ Attic podcast. Yep. With always, Jer. Hello. I'm David Carroll, aka Real DWC. Follow me on Twitter. Follow the BJJ Attic, BJJ Attic Radio. And Jerwell P. That's J E E R O W E L P. Nice. All right. Also, Fight Fans Radio. If you don't know who they are, just check that out. Facebook. Uh, no, I, I plug everything. I can go all day. We have too many things on the go right now. Yeah. But uh, please go check it out. We have YouTube pages. That's it. I'm, I'm done talking about it. Just go do it right now. Um, so, Jer. Hello. Today we have uh, Keith going on. Yep. He is a BJJ black belt under Pedro. Sour. Thank you. I was going to actually tear that name up. So, so let me tell you a little bit about him. I'm sure you know about Pedro a bit. But he's an 8th degree Hicks and Gracie black belt. I believe he actually wears the, the, red, the red and black belt. And uh, what, do you, what do you think it means to, to be under someone who is under Hickson, who is under Helio, who is under Carlos, and then uh, Matsu Mieda? Like, Matsu. do you see the lineage? Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't say the name. I obviously butchered it. Mitsuyu. <laughs> Mitsuyo Maeda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sound way more authentic than I do. No, but we were talking about lineage before, but like how crazy is that lineup? And then uh, Keith Owens right after uh, Pedro. What do you th- what's your thoughts on this, man? Dude, that's old school Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you find sometimes like uh, the longer it goes on, you think – some techniques get changed. You know, like the game telephone? Yeah. We start off, I say, and then by the time it gets back to you, yeah, it's like, underwear! Like, what? That's not what we said at all. But do you think their jujitsu? do you think they're, I'm going to ask him actually, if it's directly from his style, which is uh, exactly how Hickson did it, or does it change slightly a bit? What do you think? To the time? Uh, I think, I think at that stage, uh, well, the present from, Back then, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think the, the style changes to, to suit the current, like what what's happening uh, right now, you know? Yeah. Because what's that, what's that Darwin theory? Natural. Uh, I believe his theory was natural selection or something like that. I thought it was what goes <laughs> up must come down. Oh, no, like, yeah. Oh. Like uh, in order to survive, you got to learn to adapt. So I think definitely, maybe. Uh, it could have changed to suit today's grappling. Yeah. So, you know what? Actually, I, I actually really want to uh, ask him also. By the way, for those, Keith Owen is on. He's coming up uh, very soon. Uh, he also has two other black belts. We'll talk to him about that. I won't give away what they are. I'll let him tell you. So, that's who we're talking about, Keith Owen. Um, <clears throat> but I do want to talk to him about is has anything kind of like came back around full circle. Like, uh, I remember we were talking to, I forget who, but, uh, you know, they said something about like, oh, we were playing uh, 50-50 a long time ago, or some people I hear them talk about, like, oh, we did deep half, you know, back in this day. You know, they might have not had a name for it, but just obviously your body gets entangled in a thousand different ways. But I want to know if there was something... That we started paying attention again? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe instead of us working on this and that, maybe there's something that that we could already be ahead, like futuristic. I think that's part like of game planning. Right? Half guard. <laughs> I think that's part, yeah. I think that's part of game planning. Yeah? Like, what, what, what do we see in tournaments that hasn't happened, uh, you know, what do you call it? <laughs> uh, man, I wasn't even on? listening to you. I hope the, the viewers were. <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> no, but like, let's say if somebody hasn't pulled off like a half guard sweep or something like that, or yeah. a butterfly sweep, then you could go Go on the drawing board, and, uh, you know, game plan for something like that. Yeah. So, so talking about game plans, I'm still game planning the, the goddamn leg drag. I'm still doing it every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we did it uh, Friday last week. Absolutely, yeah. we did, and it felt good. Yeah. 
we tried in real time much harder. Yeah, very. I also uh, went over it uh, while rolling again, and, and I picked up a couple uh, more tips. Yeah. Uh, just little things, man. It's cool. The more I do it, I find something new every time. It's like rewatching your favorite movie. Yeah. Which is your favorite movie, by the way? Batman. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, you've been on a Batman uh, voice kick today. It's kind of annoying to yeah, me, but I like Batman. Uh, well, I don't know. Old school movies. You know. Yeah. Fight Club is a good movie. Yeah. That's something you could watch like twice, three times, where you learn something new. It actually took me to my tenth time to realize that he was the same guy. Yeah. I never really got the movie, but yeah, I just made that up. Batman's a good movie. Yeah, I haven't seen a new one. Right. Let us know. Rate it out of ten. Right now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, nine. Wow. Nine out of ten. That's powerful. It's powerful. You say uh, like which which <laughs> which trilogy do you like better? Hold on, the Batman, Lord of the Rings, Batman. Hold on, the Matrix, or Naked Gun, Batman. Naked Gun was good back in the day. Batman. Yeah? All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I get your point. So how's wrestling going? Uh, wrestling is fantastic, actually. It's uh, hard. Yeah? But I think, uh, I think I'll think i pick up a couple of things here and there. Uh, wrestling is a lot better. Working a, a lot of my takedown and defense. So. Yeah. Get you, to, get you up to that 100%. And uh, when, I, when I was training with you, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Uh, I felt the powers of what a double. Uh, now I see why you pumble. pumble, 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 pumble. Yeah, not plumble. No, pumble. Yeah, pumble. Yeah, no, I'm just yeah. kidding. But I, I understand uh, why it's so important to do that drill now because yeah. you know when I drill it, there's another thing. Very lazy, just kind of like water flowing. Yeah. I realize, like in real situation, it's actually not that easy to just no, get back not, and and, it's not. and pummel. Pummel, yeah. It's not that easy to pummel in yeah. real life. No, it's hard, man. When you Especially. had double unders, I felt like uh, I'm not gonna lie. It felt like a mix of King Kong and Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex just <laughs> gripped my back. That was Greco Roman. The very, series that was it's very Dan Henderson. Yeah, Greco Roman is. The hardest thing ever. Ever? These are all, well, for physical, yeah, physically demanding, taxing. Yeah, I, I was blown away, man. Yeah. Well, I think I learned something. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're doing it. I'm, I'm going to steal some shit from you, yeah. obviously, because I'm too lazy to go out there and wrestle right now. Yeah. So, Jer, I'm airing you out right here, so, live. BJ. <sighs> oh, I hear the sigh. <laughs> what? Okay. If everyone listened to the last episode, what did you tell everyone? I don't know. I can't remember. I, oh, man. <laughs> I, I said I was going to compete. On Sunday. On the, Sunday. On the SFL. Yeah. And it didn't happen. Do you regret it now? Retro. Is it retrospect? Retros. Yeah. Looking think, back. Yeah. In retrospect? <laughs> is that what it is? I think so. Okay. But uh, yes and no. Okay. But right now I'm kind of in a mix of changing on my style a little bit. So Are you one of those people that don't want to go out there unless you're sure you're gonna win? No, not, no, for sure. I wanna go out there and compete, but I have some things that I wanna work on, some things that stylistically that you know I wanna to try to try to blend together. Yeah. A little experiment behind. So I wanna actually uh get his take on uh competitions as we do with most of the uh, elite grapplers that we talk to it's always my uh, burning desire right now to talk about I find I'd love to hear what they say what they say to their students if they encourage it which I'm sure they do but they don't push it too much but I'd like to know what his coach also said and, and maybe you know he probably has stories if you look around like he's must have been around a lot of people I'm seeing fight footage from Pedro Sauer, it must, it's black and white, so it's probably from a long time ago. Old school. I mean, the 80s. it's instilled in you to kind of compete one way or the other. I think it's very important to compete. But like every day grappling, you're kind of competing. Like it's inside you to, to do it. Yeah. Like we kind of push that. I also heard him say a lot of things on uh, the self defense is uh, lacking nowadays. And that's, I want to hear his take on that too. So. 
I'm, I'm excited to talk to someone with so much uh, depth and knowledge behind them. A lot of history in the in the sport. Um, yeah, go on. I think I cut you off from something. No, it was about competing, maybe. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I think it's important to compete. You know, to to experience the moment, uh, to experience that kind of moment, that kind of feeling that you don't get from a dojo. So yeah, I know you will compete. So this doesn't really apply to you because I've seen you compete this year already. So, but they, I was saying like um, winning and losing. Yep. Sorry about that, guys. Um, and they, they said, you know, the real, the real losers are the people that are too scared to even go out there and compete. It's not about if you're going to place or not, or this and that. I know it's in a lot of people right now. There's a lot of people, uh, hyper-focused on their team winning and everyone winning. And, but at the end of the day, it's about yourself getting better. So if you don't compete, I, I don't think it's even possible. Hmm. Like I'm not winning matches right now. But I feel like I'm getting better every time, yet I'm still not winning. You know, I ha something hasn't clicked yet. It's probably my mental part. I'm going to really buckle down on that. But do you know what I'm saying, though? I feel like I'm always improving lately. Yeah. It just hasn't, like, the results haven't shown yet. Yeah. Some stiff competition out there. Oh, there is. <laughs> when you go to compete. I think a lot of people, uh, I don't know if I'm making excuses. I'm not trying to. But a lot of people that do tournaments, I find lately, I see a lot of the same faces. They've been doing it for a while. They're getting used to it. They're in the zone when they show up. They have a ritual, which I'm starting to create. Like, like a hardening I'm starting process. to drill before, which I never did. I used to walk on cold. Yeah, I think it's a bad idea, man. Pete Roberts, remember? He's like, uh, a fighter's going to have like a hardening process before yeah. competing. It's yeah. very important to separate yourself from everything that's happening. That's you know a good I mean? point. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard to do that even just going to the gym some days. You know, yeah. you you on your way to work or on your way to the dojo, you know, yeah. if a car drives by, it's flash a puddle, it, it fucks you up a bit. Yeah. And then you get in there, you, you got to erase that all. I've been hitting the reset button. No shit. No lies. Like, ever since he said that, yeah. I've been hitting reset yeah. when, when everything's been going to, like a shit show. My brain's starting to... To go in the wrong direction, I'm feeling like I hate the world at the moment. Like I get down sometimes of it yeah. rolling. You know, I hit reset, went back, and you know, mediocre, but it saved like me from getting like completely yeah. shut down because yeah. well, I have a different setup. Well, on Wednesdays when I uh, do the the Greco Roman, man, there's a hardening process that they don't make you like you'll do rounds like it's two hours, right? Yeah. So you're, you're doing rounds and they won't let you sit down or anything. They'll let you stand up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it pushes you to that mental state where, you know, this is, I got to push myself. And, oh my God. Are you naturally one uh, able to push yourself hard? Yeah. Like when you're training, let's say no one's around and you said I came to do just a cardio workout. Yeah. Can you push yourself pretty damn hard? I think so, yeah. Yeah? And especially like there's a senior senior coach there he's the uh former olympian yeah and like the presence that he gives you like that aura yeah it's just like all right i'm good did it's you like, just go batman on me for yeah. a second yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, that's good to have someone there to uh inspire you a bit but uh man it's always wrestling with you i want to uh, hear you talk like this about bjj uh, it's transitions to my yeah. uh, that's what i want to ask that uh, keith we're gonna ask him he's coming on real soon is you know he's from idaho uh they, good potatoes. Have, yeah good potatoes <laughs> they have a lot of a lot of really good wrestlers like this yeah. this state out there that whole area the midwest i believe that's where it's it is. we're in canada so we don't know anything about america no but they, they produce a lot of good wrestlers so i want to ask him is it easier to train a jiu-jitsu guy? Yeah, like, is there easier? Like, this guy comes in with the, you know, college pedigree wrestling. He's obviously going to smash some people at the start just off wrestling skills. Yeah. I wonder how easy it is for them to, to learn, or maybe it's harder because they got that years and years of doing certain things. I don't know. Like, wrestlers, they're hard to pin. Yeah, that's, I mean, they don't want to be on their back ever, yeah. right? And even if they're on their back, they're so hard to keep on their back, you know? Yeah. So from that, do you have you do you get that mindset when you're there now? What? 
Is that has that changed so far in your jujitsu? Like you're more aggressive because I feel wrestling. You're just a pit bull the whole time. Yeah, I think I'm more aggressive now. Like I'm not. Uh, I'm fighting more. Yeah. Like for my underhooks and stuff like that to yeah. really flatten them out. Because in wrestling over there, uh, they're man. They they pop up. Yeah. They pop up, and you got to have that control to keep them down. So. So, all ties in and no space. Yeah, the tightness is a lot better. I think for now. Do you like that heavy jujitsu? Like, are you a fan of it? Yeah, right now I am. I used to be a loose, uh, loose grab, a loose goose. Yeah. So. And it's that was just your own style, right? You weren't taught to be loose. Yeah. I but, don't think anyone's taught to be loose, right? Like everyone's taught tight, no space jujitsu. That's how yeah. it should be. Yeah. Where did the looseness come from? Just you being lazy or you being yeah, fancy? Probably. Which one? I don't know. Fancy. Fancy. I like fancy. You I've what? gotten back to a deep half guard. Both, both goddamn time. <laughs> Pulled it off like three times the other day, yesterday. That's good. So I was on Twitter. I, I got a lot of responses. The, the place was on fire. I had Twitter blowing up. I asked everyone, uh, knee on belly, is that a position or a transition? Uh, what's your thoughts? Because I didn't see you on here responding to me. You know, I had everyone responding. You I know, had... George Brito, Dennis Kang, uh, <laughs> you know, Baraglio, Victor, Estima. Those guys, you know, Sergio, Machado, I'm name dropping. But all these nice people had time to respond to me. But, you know, the host here, Jer. My phone is not with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, Jiu-Jitsu. No, uh, no, that's not what I said. Neon belly? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is it a position or a, uh, what? Position or? Transition. For jiu-jitsu, it's a transition, I think. Yeah. In other sports, it's probably a position, such as MMA. What do you, what do you use it for, then? Without your, your theory on it, but what, what do you use it for? I use it to uh, I go, go for chokes or an armbar. Yeah. I wouldn't, I don't really chill there because you're going to go half guard. You do the uh, Dougie slide, the Dougie swivel. No, I don't know. I do the fancy stuff. I yeah. Know. I don't like easy submissions. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, me personally, I, I really think, and this is just me personally, I believe it is a position. Why is that? Why is that? Just because, you know. Oh, hold on one second. Uh, Sorry, guys. Yeah, so position. There we go. All right. <laughs> go on about that for one second. For the position. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I like it as a submission, too. Uh, I have this thing. I got it from Jeff Glover, not in person, through his video. <laughs> I'm not that cool. But, uh, yeah, I use it for, like, triangle setups, like jumping triangles. Yo, that's one of my favorite moves on Earth. That's the only – that's the – that's really the only thing I have from that, uh, from the neon belly or a choke. Yeah. So that's all you got. That's all I got, man. You know what? There is a, I think it's Jared Weiner. Is that his name? Weiner. Weiner. One of them. I think he actually has a, uh, neon belly. a neon belly DVD series coming out. Sorry guys. Keith, uh, is trying to call in right now. He's going to be calling in. Uh, real soon uh, so stay tuned for that he is coming very very shortly I uh, just gotta work something out with him guys um, also don't forget we got big things coming up for those that don't know side side note just totally off track um, should I give it away now who we got coming up I think, quick? I think so yeah? Yeah. Let's okay. Do Let's do it? Let's do it. I just don't... What do you got uh, plans? What do you got plans? All right. I have talked with... Who? A Gracie. So I should say this first. It's a Gracie. Is he Hickson? It is not Hickson. Okay, well then. We have another 85,000 more to go. Is okay. It, is it Kira? No. I wish it was Kira. You do? I, I wish it was Kira. <laughs> do you have a crush on her? No. Do you find her attractive? Yeah. <laughs> do you have a crush on her? No. You're a liar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, 
It is Clark Gracie. Oh. Really? Yes, sir. What do you? What, what's your thoughts when you hear that? Clark Gracie, big name, big name, big name. ADECC. He's competed at everything. Everything. He he's. I'm not gonna lie. I I think I said this before. I don't know if I said it on here, but I, I uh, man, he is one of the most constant. He keeps improving. Yeah. And like, he's not that old either. Eh? No, he's. I believe he's a young guy yeah. still. Yeah. Younger, around our age probably. And a Gracie, so. Bread yeah, I, it's nice to talk to a Gracie uh, about this type of stuff because, like, man, the knowledge, the history, the lifestyle. Yeah, man. It's uh, I'm excited to have Clark Gracie on the show. So, sure. anyways, everyone out there, Clark Gracie coming soon. Should be about August, some point. I believe maybe, uh, maybe Ryan Hall is coming on. I like Ryan Hall. Yeah, what do you like about Ryan Hall? It's just a style. Yeah. Oh, wait, uh, I watched a couple of his DVDs. Pretty sick. The yeah. way he teaches everything is like so, uh, not philosophical, but very technical in how he he explains things. Like he doesn't only tell you like why you should do it; he tells you why you shouldn't do certain things. Yeah, do you, by the way, do you like that? But uh, do you like that style? What his style? Or no, do you like that uh, teaching style? Yeah, man, I did a seminar uh, with Robert Drysdale, and he's he he did a move. Yeah, straight up does a move. Says the pros and then says the cons. Yeah, I think, and I I was blown away. I thought this was the easiest way for me to learn. Definitely, because it teaches you. I think, I think, yeah, it teaches you why. Yeah. Like, it, man, it's three hundred and sixty degrees. You know, you learn every aspect of like why you should do this instead of saying, okay, I think I can I can pull this off. It's cool, you do it, but it doesn't work. Then you ask yourself why it didn't work. Like in practice, like I'll learn something. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, oh, I think I can do this. Oh, no, I couldn't. What happened? And someone to tell you, explain something like that, uh, I think it definitely helps with your game. Hmm. You know, uh, I had some Ryan Hall uh, DVDs. Mm -hmm. I also enjoyed his teaching style. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. He seems like a, a really humble guy, actually. And uh, he's trained with your, your best friend, you know, on Earth Five, right seven. now. Yeah, what did you like that change for him? Yeah, Do you like him going out there and like, because it's 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 shown a big jump in his game. I find. Oh, for sure. You roll with Marcelo every day. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a uh, well. I think anyone who really works with Marcelo is a step in a what do you call it? Their game up. Step in the game up. Yeah, for sure. And uh, especially for Marcelo, I think it's good for him too because he doesn't fight a lot of fighters that move. The way uh, Ryan Hall does, like invert and stuff. Uh, so yeah, you know what? Yeah, that's just gonna, that's a great point. It's good for both. It's good for the whole school, I guess. He probably comes up with a bunch of counters that he could teach his students. Yeah, for guys that play inverted, love the heel hooks because uh, he loves heel hooks. Yeah. So yeah, entertaining. So hello, hey guys. Currently, <laughs> we're having a little uh, difficulty, so should be back on track in a few minutes. All right. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, you have Skype, Keith always should be on very soon, hopefully. Uh, we're just experiencing technical difficulties yeah. with the uh, oh, with the I phone know. number, so shouldn't take too long, guys. Sorry about that. So, Marcelo Garcia and Ryan Hall. <laughs> Did you just totally blow it on this podcast live? No. It's okay. Jer Jared can't handle the pressure sometimes of talking. So English is he's, not <laughs> he's a He's a shy guy there. Um, so, guys, sorry about this. But uh, tell us about your week right here in training since we're back. Week? What? The training? training? Yeah. I don't know. Man, the Bob Marley drink. Putting me to sleep, yo. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have like an up and then a crash, yeah. eh? 
I drank this thing. I don't know if the states have it, but it's just a Bob Marley drink. Yeah. Apparently, it's like I've never tried it. I didn't want to take a sip. It's like a reverse energy drink. You know what I mean? So. Hello? Hey! Hey, Keith. Keith? Owen, how are you? <laughs> I am good, hey. Sorry, man, I've been having trouble with my phone. That's okay. It happens. Uh, I totally apologize about that, man. I've been trying so hard to call in, and I've been having phone problems, so... Uh, but I got it figured out now, so I apologize. Oh, don't apologize. It's okay. I'm just glad my uh, co-host, Jared... Was kind of choking. Figure it out. He had a hard time. Uh, How limited uh, English? <laughs> <laughs> did you guys, um, did you guys make stuff up before I got on? We're just making stuff up, waiting for you. But, uh, it's just all telling good. lies. Exactly. I was, I was gonna start telling jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm ready, guys. So it's rock and roll. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, can you maybe start a little bit, uh, just a brief, how you got into BJJ, who's your teacher, your rank type of thing that uh, the usual people love to know? Yeah. Well, I have been in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu now for about, I don't know, 20, 21 years. Um, my professor is Professor Pedro Sauer. Pedro, Pedro Sauer is a student under Hickson and Elio Gracie. Uh, professor's one of the original guys uh, that, you know... Not a Gracie, but he might as well be one because he hung around the family that long. And uh, I was fortunate enough back in, I don't know, 93, 94, um, I saw the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and I saw Hoist Gracie choking out Dan Severin. And I said, hey, man, i got to learn this. And at that time, there was only like three people in the United States that were doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It was the Gracie Academy down in California. It was uh, Craig Kukuk and Henzo Gracie in New York. And uh, then there was Pedro Sauer in Salt Lake, and I just happened to live super close to Salt Lake, so I got really lucky. I'm sure there was a couple other guys, but, man, I didn't know. I, the Internet wasn't very great, so I had no idea. So, And uh, I've been doing it now for about, 12, I don't know, 21 years and rocking and rolling, man. And I, I've, I've been a black belt now for about six years, and I'm just starting to know what the hell I'm doing. So, I'm 21, so... <laughs> I think you've been doing it as long as I've been alive. So, Well, uh, I, I've been doing it a long time, but, you know, it only seems like a short while, man, that, that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has been in America. And, um, boy, there's been a lot of changes, and i got to say the changes have been for the better. I don't think it's been for the worse. Things are things are going great, man. UFC guys are now using uh, BJ Day, the rocket. They look good, so uh, I, I like it. So I'm, I'm really excited about how it's transpired in America. So looking back, if you didn't get into jiu-jitsu, what do you think uh, you'd be doing right now? Well, I was a martial arts instructor to begin with. So regardless of whether I was in jiu-jitsu, I was already a black belt in martial arts. So I don't know. I've been maybe 26, 27 years in the martial arts. So I'd be doing martial arts anyway, uh, you know, stand-up martial arts. And I, I've done a lot of that. And it's been... Um, it's been an awesome uh, thing, and, and man, I, I saw the Gracies kicking butt, and I said, man, i got to learn how to do that. It's been weird in my life, too, and I don't know if I should say this or not, but when I was a kid, I loved pro wrestling. So I, I used to do pro wrestling all the time, and with the, in the backyard, you know, the backyard pro wrestling, just all kinds of that stuff, and I loved it, and I, you know, and when the Gracies are coming around, it's like, oh, yeah, this is what I want to do. And I always hated regular high school wrestling because it was always muscle, man. And guys were, like, a lot stronger than I was all the time. So I just didn't like it. Oh, I hear you, man. I used to take you know, couch cushions off everywhere and do every wrestling move you can imagine. Yeah. And and so so it's been, you know, it. it when jiu-jitsu came along and wow, it's something I don't have to use muscle on and I can still win a guy, man, it was awesome. So, you know, I've been doing that ever since. And I think it's nothing wrong with wrestling. I mean, that's cool, but what do you do when you're older, you know, and you get old and you don't have that kind of muscle and you're, you know, I guess you get beat up or do jujitsu, one of the two. I like it. I was actually going to ask you, Keith, uh, being a black belt in other martial arts, I'm correct. Yeah. I have two other black belts. 
two other black belts in Kung Fu. And one of my instructors uh, is a man named Joe Cowles. And Joe was a former student of Bruce Lee. So um, I got to learn a lot of about Sifu Bruce through Joe Cal. So uh, I have a lot of stand-up background, too, as well as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Do you, do you think doing other martial arts helps your depth or your skill set in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Other people to try different martial arts? Uh, I think, you know, I'm just going to say this. I think that learning a stand-up martial art, if you're a stand-up martial artist and then you start doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you'll pick it up way quicker than a guy who's never had anything. It's amazing. I'll have stand-up guys that'll come and say, I want to start taking Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and they do, and, and they just pick it up real fast. So I think, yes, um, they understand the concepts a lot better. They understand about fighting. Their body is more capable of doing the moves. So I, I think it really helps to have a stand-up martial art. And, you know, um, just on this point, too, um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, you know, not everything in fighting. I mean, you know, if you're in a street fight out on the street, you want to punch a guy in the face and get away, not necessarily wrestle with him. So, but at the same time, if you go to the ground out on the street, you're going to be happy that you have Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So I think they complement each other really well. And, you know, BJJ guys should be doing some stand-up, should be doing Muay Thai or something like that to augment their their training. Um, I agree with you. What styles of Kung Fu, uh, just so people know, uh, I'm curious myself. Uh, say that again, I apologize. What style of uh, the Kung Fu uh, did you actually take so uh, people know? Oh, well, the, the style of, of Kung Fu that I took is, uh, well, two styles. One is Thai Kung Fu. Uh, the Thai Kung Fu is a uh, Kempo martial art. Um, the, the, the Grand Master was a man named David German. And he did the Thai martial arts system, and it's really a Kempo offshoot with joint locks. And then the one that I took from Joe Cowles was, it's called Wu Wei Gong Fu. Wu Wei stands for spontaneous action. And it's really cool because it's like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu standing up. I mean, it's, you're, you're fighting a guy and you don't really know what's happening next and your body just moves and, and, uh, there's a lot of trapping involved. So it's, it's like, um, it's a trapping martial art like Wing Chun, but, uh, Joe added joint locks with it, so it's really kind of like two martial arts in one. You get the trapping of the Wing Chun uh, with joint locking, and uh, man, that was always a lot of fun. And you just didn't know what your body was going to do. You just, you, you know, it's funny because you see, um, you see Bruce Lee movies, you know, Enter the Dragon, where he's pointing and you know, be like water and and flow like water, and and you go, what the hell does that mean? And, until you start taking the martial art and you go, Oh, I, I get what he's saying. You're like water. You just, you just move around it. You don't, you know, when, when there's an opening, you just go right through it. You just go to where he leads you. So, um, it's really, yeah, I, I tell you, it's really helped with my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, the, the, the Wu Wei Gung Fu. So I was very fortunate enough to be able to take, take it from Joe Cal. I learned some great, uh, Bruce Lee stories too, that people don't know. So, <laughs> well, you're gonna have to save those for a for a book one day. <laughs> Some crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff. Uh, he he was unreal. I remember actually he pulled off an armbar and entered the dragon. It was pretty cool. Yeah, he was doing Brazilian. He was, well, he was he was doing grappling before grappling was cool, man. He he understood what was going on, but he just hadn't quite got there yet. But I, I assure you, if he were alive today, he would be. He'd have some kind of Brazilian jiu-jitsu going on. Oh, most likely. He, he was a great martial artist. Uh, just change the subject real quick. You being under uh, Pedro Sauer, uh, what does that mean to you? Well, what that means to me is, uh, and I, I don't mean to insult anybody else's instructor, but Professor Sauer is the greatest jiu-jitsu uh, instructor in the world today. And, you know, I know a lot of people say that, but, man, I'm really serious about it. Um, he knows more about jiu-jitsu than any human being I have ever met. And I've done a lot of seminars. And Professor Sauer just has all the answers to everything. It's just truly amazing. Now, you'll sit there and you're listening to that going, yeah, whatever, whatever I take with him. And he knows a lot. But Professor Sauer, I, uh, he's got this uncanny ability to know almost any way to get out of whatever, but he has a great way of teaching it to you as well. So it's, it's not just the knowledge base. It's the way he teaches it. 
So if people are a fan of me and they like what I offer, it's really because of Professor Sowers. I mean, he knows so many cool little tricks and details, and he understands the concept of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, where uh, it's really for a... Uh, you always assume that everybody's bigger and stronger than you, and it's not about overpowering. It's about using the tricks that you have to really, I mean, just trick a guy into submitting. I mean, he just doesn't see it coming. And, uh, man, I, I could not be more happy being his student. And I have trained under lots of people who are great, great instructors. But, man, he always, I tell you this, you go to a Pedro Sauer seminar, it will blow your mind. So you, all, you go, oh, man, you will find out jiu-jitsu that you didn't think existed. And I don't think a lot of people really know. Uh, you know, and yeah. and if you ask any Pedro Sauer rep, they'll tell you the same thing I'm telling you. It's just an amazing, he's an amazing man. He's, he's, he's one of the best in the world. And I'm just very proud to be his student. And that's why at any, at every turn I could say how great he is. I really try to, because, you know, and let me just say this outside of being a great instructor and a great teacher, because we've, you know, I've already told you that he is a really great human being. You know, he tries to help everybody and give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And he never has a bad word to say about anybody. And so, uh, that's been really good because I follow, I try to follow his example. You know, I always say, what would professor do in a situation like that? And, you know, uh, and it always, you know, hey, he's always preaching forgiveness, you know, because Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, first of all, it's for a lot of assholes. They're just everywhere. And, I mean, lots of bad, bad intentions, people talking bad about each other, trying to hurt each other's feelings, downplaying everybody. And I try not to do that. And Professor Sauer, I've never heard him say a bad word about anybody. Um, you know, and, and that's always been awesome. So he's, he's been a, a good example as well of, of what I think an all around perfect instructor should be. Man, that, that sums it up. That's pretty good, man. <laughs> I'm excited. Can you tell how excited I am when I talk about Professor Sauer? Just, I mean, in a lot of a lot of his black belts are the same way. I mean, we uh, and again, you're going to think that I'm I'm being egotistical here, and I, I don't think so at all. I think we're some of the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu instructors. I'm not saying competitors in the world, but I am saying best jiu-jitsu instructors as far as um, giving you some of the details that you go, wow, I, I can't believe that he knew that or he showed that to me. I mean, and it's not just me. It's every Pedro Sauer black belt has the cool, cool details. And it's all because of Professor Sauer. I mean, yeah, I just happen to be one that's a little bit more out there. But, um, and you go to any one of these guys, and they're just top notch, some of the top guys in the world. I, I love learning from, from my counterparts, guys who are the same um, belt rank. I'll go to their seminar because I know I'll pick up some awesome moves that, that maybe I didn't see before. Uh, I have a question. If, uh, Go ahead. At what point do you think you should start developing that philosophical stage where you should start thinking, like, why am I doing this? Like, you know what I mean? Say it one more time for me, just so I make sure I understand the question. At what point, uh, I don't know, belt or whatever, but when do you what? start developing that, that sort of uh, philosophical side, I guess? Like, when you start to ask questions. Uh, you know, um, I, I got to tell you, um, the philosophical side for me came at a round brown belt. However, I think you can get your, you'll get your philosophical side for sure when you get to be a black belt, you know, because, man, you, tr you go so hard at trying to tap people out, and that's all well and good. But you, I, I, get, I get to tell you this, you'll learn so much more at black belt. I can't believe when I got my black belt how much more uh, I've learned uh, about the technique of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And let me tell you guys, it's a technique that you use, and it's not just pure muscle. I mean, guys, you know, you're a young guy. If you're 20 years old, you know, and you can do 5,000 push-ups, yeah, you can use your muscle, and that's fine. But you know what? You know, you see MMA guys, and they're just muscling and everything, and that works. That's really awesome. But they're, But when you get older, and when you get 25, when you get 30, when you get 31, you know, 40, 50, your, your muscle isn't going to be quite there. Your timing's not going to be quite there. Your speed isn't going to be quite there. So, but you can, I get guarantee you this, you can rely on the technique of, of jujitsu really well. And, uh, that's the exciting part of it. And you start to understand the theory a lot more when you get to be a black belt. And, you know, as a teacher, especially if you'll be a teacher, you're going to have to impart this stuff to your students. And, and you got, you got to know it to be able to impart it because if you don't know it, you're going to not sound very good. You're not going to sound, 
be really communicative and, and, and be able to impart that to them. So I think in black belt, you'll really, it'll really start to understand it, man. At blue belt, white belt, it's, you know, it, it's a total maze that people are trying to figure out and, and understand. And purple belt, you're starting to get a hold of it. And I got a hold of it pretty good at brown belt, but nothing like when I got my black belt. And, and, um, uh, the more the more I'm in jiu-jitsu, the more that I see that it's not about muscle. It's try to use the least amount of muscle that you possibly can. And uh, boy, for some people that's hard, especially for Americans. You know, where wrestling's a big part of the culture, and you go hard and you go fast. And I mean, it works. It does. But you don't see people after they graduate college going, "Hey, man, let's start a collegiate wrestling program in our in our garage." You know, their their bodies are beat up. You know. But what they'll do is they'll say, hey, let's start a jiu-jitsu program. You and I, we'll get some guys together. And then they treat it just like wrestling, and then people get hurt. So, you know, you, you I don't know if I answered your question, but <laughs> the black belt is, is wow, where it's, it's really getting good. Yes, that gives me time to slide. Right? <laughs> no, that, that, uh, that definitely gave me uh, also sparked a couple of questions I had lined up with uh, a couple of your answers. So, uh, if it seems like I'm jumping back to something you said, I am. Uh, you said that all Pedro Sauer instructors, probably some of the best. You said maybe not competing, but definitely some of the best coaches. Yes. I'm wondering if you found that people are kind of getting off that path of actually teaching everything that's inside of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and just uh, focusing a little too much on what plays a big role in tournament style uh, competitions for grappling? Sure, sure, sure. That's a great question. You know, um, let me just tell you why um, the Brazilian or Pedro Sauer black belts um, aren't probably, I would say, the greatest competitors in the world. And it's not because they can't be, because we have a lot of guys. Uh, Jeff Curran, um, you know, um, Johnny Carlquist, there's a lot of guys that are competing, and they win gold all the time. James Gardner is a black belt under Professor Sauer who wins all the time. So there's a lot of guys. There are guys that do that. But you know what? Professor has never pushed the tournament side too much. You know, I mean, there's a lot of associations that say, hey, you got to go to tournaments and you got to you got to compete. And Professor has never been like that. You know, he's been focused on self defense primarily um, in in, in, in what he's teaching. So a lot of things are focused on the traditional Gracie style of self-defense. Um, and he hasn't really pushed the tournament side. The professor's never been a world champion. As far as I know, I would be surprised. I'd be like, how come I didn't know that? He might be, but you know, he's definitely won a lot of been to tournaments and he's won them, but he's never really pushed us to do that. Uh, I've been to tournaments. I've, you know, I've competed, you know, but I'm not, I'm no world champion either. And I don't, see a lot of us being like that. He's pushed more of the teacher students how to be awesome in jiu-jitsu um, more than anything. So I just want to make that perfectly clear. Could we be world champions? I suppose so. I mean, if that were our focus, you know, like a lot of the other associations. But um, as far as people focusing on just the, um, the tournament side of it, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I think the tournament side is awesome because I'll I, I just say this, and I'm just speaking for me. I'm not speaking for anybody else uh, in our association, but uh, I think tournaments are an important thing to do, man. Uh, and one of the reasons is it tests yourself right at that moment, all right, where you're at at that moment against competition. I mean, we can't go out and go get into a fight or anything like that to see how our jiu-jitsu is. So what's the closest thing we do? We go to tournaments. And uh, I'm, I'm big on them. I mean, um, our team... Uh, Team Rhino, we've won lots of medals. Uh, we've gone to Pan Ams and, and we succeeded and, and done quite well. I can't say that for all of the Pedro Sauer affiliates. I don't think, I think maybe half of them might go to tournaments and a lot don't. And I don't begrudge that at all. But if you are a tournament competitor, good for you. Uh, you should go to tournaments. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, having said that, man, we're living in a world now of our Brazilian Jiu Jitsu where, and, and I get this a lot. Well, Keith Owens never won, you know, world championship. Why should I listen to him? Like, really, that's the only reason that you should ever listen to somebody is because he's won a world championship. Like, that's not everybody's goal. Everybody's goal is to, you know, be a self-defense expert, maybe. Um, and it doesn't mean that you have 
study jiu-jitsu just because you don't go, you know, you don't spend your time and effort traveling around the country doing tournaments. I mean, that's, that's not the, that's not the issue. I, so I don't point at a tournament guy and go, oh, you're just a tournament guy. You must not know self-defense. Uh, I, I love tournaments. I'm cool with that. But at the opposite time, I mean, I'll show a technique on, on a video or something and I'll have guys go, you know, they'll, they'll post something like, oh, well, you can't use that as a tournament. Well, I mean, that's not the only thing in the entire world. So, so you got to understand that. But can you take, can you take tournament moves, get some tournament moves from a guy like me? You, you're damn right you can. Uh, I can show a lot of things that work and tap guys out. And you should be paying attention to, uh, to the moves I do because a lot of them are easy to do. Where do I get them? I get them from Professor Sauer. But are we, are we tournament guys? No, not really. I don't think that matters, though. I don't think that should, should matter as far as what you watch and who you watch. I, I agree. Speaking of your videos, man, you're, you're everywhere. You're, you're on, man, if you, if anyone just Googles your name, I mean, you pop up a million times. So how, how do people, other than just Googling your name, uh, you know, self promote yourself. Here's your chance, Keith. Well, I, um, I hooked up with submissions 101. I have, uh, one of my students uh, owns submissions 101. His name is Ari Bolden. And, and, uh, I'm very proud of this guy. He's a good guy. He's um, he's been an awesome student of mine, and he he promotes me uh, pretty heavily on submissions 101, which is uh, which I'm very thankful. You know, and if he didn't promote me, I'd still be his instructor. I don't really care. Um, but I've been fortunate enough to be on submissions 101. And man, I'll tell you this: um, it's a tough road being out there. You know, being well known. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys who, who kind of want to be well-known, I'm not going to say famous because I don't think that at all, but, you know, more of the well-known kind of guy, um, you know, Master Lloyd Irvin, you know, he's a well-known kind of guy, you know, well, and, and he, he backs it up and he proves it and everything like that, but, man, you, you kind of have thick skin to be able to take the criticism that people want to heap on you. And uh, so if you're, if you're a black belt out there or you, you ever want to do um, – videos you you got to watch out man because you better be able to take your share of criticism but i'm going to tell you this there's nothing better i i I get i get hundreds of emails uh i'd probably say a hundred emails every couple months from people telling me that they've used a move that i've shown and it's worked for them worked for them at a tournament worked for them in the gym and man it doesn't get any better than that when the people are using your material and succeeding with it I always tell my students too, and I don't mean to be egotistical because that's it's not really who I am, but if you'll just use my moves, just move, do what I tell you, you will succeed because the moves are tricky, but they're simple at the same time. And so, and, and that's, that's really the key. So, and I, I think people like my material too. I mean, I show a lot of it and people really like it. I mean, they're telling me they like it. So I'm just fortunate enough to be, I guess, more well known than other people. But, uh, it's a t- it can be a tough road, let me tell you. Oh yeah, the people, uh, some of the some of the shit they say under some YouTube videos. I mean, I mean, some say it just to say it to try to get people going, but some are uh, some are cruel. I- I've read some under my own videos that we do for interviews. Sure. Man, they they don't have a problem tearing you up. Yeah, and you're you're going to experience that too um, with your podcast. You know. Um, you want your name out there. You want, you know, you want to be heard from other people. Um, I got to tell you, you know, just being honest, there's a lot of dumbasses out there. They think they know jujitsu and they don't know anything. I mean, they don't know anything, but yet it's easy to keyboard warrior everything. And, you know, so you got your haters, you know, let me just sum it up here because you're going to experience your share of haters. Let me tell you, you know, when your podcast gets to bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, which I'm assuming that's what you want to do, but you, you just got to have thick skin, man. Haters, it's like, that's the best thing that could ever happen to you because, man, the worst thing that could ever happen to you is no one says a damn thing about you. So as long as they're taking the time to say something bad about you, at least they're taking the time to think about you, So, which is awesome. I mean, I, I love haters. I don't mind. I mean, it's cool because I love helping the people that I help. If you'll take my move, most of them are free anyway. Take them and use them. Man, that's well, the day I die, I'll, I'll be thinking of that. Man, the, the, the jiu-jitsu that I showed has been... That has helped a lot of people to get better in jiu-jitsu, and that's 
that's what excites me. That's what gets me up every day. I'm not gonna lie, I stole your shrimp. I I uh, I saw what you said most people do, and I saw uh, you I saw you reenact my actual shrimp. So I'm trying to change. <laughs> <speak>. it's awesome. <laughs> Video, by the way, man. I was laughing my ass off just watching it. <laughs> this one sticks out to me, and I, in case people don't know or have heard this before, and if they did, I'm sure they don't mind hearing it again. Can you speak on ten thousand taps, and and not you yeah. get thousand taps? Yeah, I've never been tapped out ten thousand times. I, I'm just gonna be honest. I've I've been tipped. To, to, uh, tapped out that many times. I'm prepared to be tapped out that many times, and that's what you should expect. You know, um, what we do is we are so focused on winning. All right, I mean, you always want to win, but the problem the problem is this: I would have no problem with the attitude of I've got to win every match that I'm in. If you never got injured, I mean, if if, we, if I could guarantee you never get injured, I'd say go out and just go win, man. Go as hard as you can and go do whatever you want to do. That's fantastic. I mean, you could go do that, and guys do that all the time. The problem is guys get injured, all right? And if you don't think so, just try going as hard as you can and, and with the attitude of I'm never going to tap because tapping means failure, so I'm going to hold on to everything as hard as I can and very last second, and you'll see that you're, you're going to get hurt. Well, what happens with, is this, is that you're going to one day probably need shoulder surgery. How much does shoulder surgery cost? Five grand, maybe more. Well, what's your significant other going to say? They're going to say, hey, you shouldn't be doing jujitsu, right? You got a job or, you know, things like that. And you can't afford that in today's, today's age. And if you're a young guy who wants to be a world champion, then you can't afford six months off with a busted shoulder or maybe even longer than that. So when you come to class, you got to have this attitude that, hey, I've tapped and I'll tap again. And tapping is not the worst thing in the world because every time you tap, you figure out a way that didn't work for you. And you, you, and you keep on trying. And what happens is this, is if you have the attitude that I'm playing around here, I'm, I want to tap this guy out, that's my goal, but I want to play around and I want to do my very best, but if I get caught, oh, hell, I'll just tap, it's no big deal, you will find that you'll have a much, much more fun time and you will find that you won't be getting submitted much anymore and you'll be submitting this guy. But the goal is not to tap someone, tap people 10,000 times, but to get tapped 10,000 times. And when you're doing that, what's happening is you're not going up against people that are really easy to beat. I mean, you've seen that before. You want to stick with guys that you can kick ass on and not have to go against the real tough guys. Man, go against some of the tough guys, you know. You should go against everybody. But, man, you shouldn't be afraid to go and, and get tapped by a brown belt or something because it's easy. You know, if you got the attitude, hey, I'll tap, that's cool. And you just keep going. And then, then what happens is the professor always says this. If you're the guy starting out in class and you'll tap and you'll, you'll be wrestling with somebody and they get you in something and you tap and then you smile to him and say, hey, what'd you do to me just now? He's going to be more likely to tell you what he did to you, what, how he tapped you. He's like, oh, I'll show you what I did to you. As opposed to this guy that's going 110% trying to kick the crap out of this dude and he just barely manages to tap you and you ask, hey, what did you get me with? He's more likely to go, hey, I, no, I don't remember. I, don't, I got lucky. And he's going to withhold stuff from you. So if you're the guy that's real happy, going in there, having a good time, a cool guy to roll with, you get tapped a lot, guys will share information with you. They'll let you know what they're doing. And about a year later, two years later, hmm, when you decide you don't want to get tapped anymore, you know everybody's game, it makes it easy for everybody. So, you know, people aren't going to agree with me. There's going to be a lot of people, hell with that, I'm not going to tap. Okay, well, then you're going to have to pay the price when you're going so hard that you're going to get injured. And, and tapping is the name of the game. So I, I want to urge you, don't, don't be afraid to tap. It's not failure. Failure is quitting. Don't, you want to you failure, quit jiu-jitsu. <laughs> that, that's failure. Right? Tapping is merely a one way that something didn't work, right? And how are you going to take chances? Because you're not, if, if you have to, if you have to continually win all the time, you're going to do your favorite moves, the same old tired shit you've always been doing. You're not going to be trying anything new. You're not going to be going and having a good time. Why? Because you, it's all about winning. And you know what? When you got to put all that pressure about winning on you, things just aren't as fun, man. You're not trying new things. You're not practicing new things. And that's the sad part about it. Lots of guys will disagree with me, but 
man, I've made it 21 years without any really major injuries. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I know a lot of guys who didn't keep doing jiu-jitsu because they got injured. Yeah. So, I, it's about longevity. It's about longevity. Yeah, it's about longevity. If you're 21 and 22 and wanted just a real quick career in MMA, yeah, go ahead, rock and roll. Muscle the hell out of everything. Your career will be over and, you know, you'll be, you, you won't last very long. You know, better have some good health insurance too. <laughs> Uh, your coaching aspect, uh, let's talk about that. What's the best thing that's come out of uh, being a coach? Well, one of the best things that came out of being a coach is uh, well, actually the ability to coach, man. that You know, you, you think in jiu-jitsu, oh, you know, rolling is a thing that you got to acquire. Well, i got to tell you this, coaching is one of the things that you got to acquire. And if you are an instructor, you know, what you should do is when guys are rolling, you should be off to the side coaching them vocally, um, coaching them vocally as far as, as, as what they should be doing. And that'll really help you in the tournament, you know. And we always, guys always wait until the tournament to coach. And, uh, it can be tough. It's, it, you know, I used to say, hey, put your arm on his neck. And I wouldn't say, hey, put your right arm on his neck. That's what you gotta do. You gotta be exact. Well, the way to do that is to practice it. I mean, and, and practicing is, is, uh, the way to greatness as far as coaching, because now you have an extra man teaming up with you when you're fighting a dude. Now, as far as what's the best thing to come out of coaching is me um, on a personal level, as far as what am I getting out of it, man, I love to see people win. That's awesome. And, and let me just say this. We talk about in class uh, that you should be tapping 10,000 times. All right. And I want to make, make this perfectly clear when you're out on the street. Oh no, it's, it's go time. You're, you're giving it 110 percent. There's no not going to be any tapping out. You're going to go right at the tournament. You're giving it 110 percent. You're going for it. That's the combat in the arena right there. In the in, when we're at the, when we're at our gym, that's not the time to have Abu Dhabi night. It's it's the time to be learning and working, and that's where we tap 10,000 times. But when you go like when you're at the if you're at the Worlds or at the pans or whatever, you're going, you're going for it, man. You're going to tap out. You're, you know, you're going to wait to the very last second if you possibly can. You don't, you don't quit. So, and when you're in war, there's no tap. And that's what I tell my guys. I mean, I say, Hey, you, you know, you're, you're going to win. They're going to try to muscle the crap out of you. You go there, you're not tapping, go tap them out. But when you're in the turn, when you're in the, or uh, when you're at this, your school, that's when you should be tapping 10,000 times. So I want to make that perfectly clear. So, my greatest thing as, a, as an instructor or as a, as a coach is I love to see the wins, man. And we sit there and talk it out. It's so awesome when you're at the, when you're at a tournament and you're, I'm sitting there having a conversation with one of my competitors as he's in the, in the, um, you know, I guess the arena, so to speak, of, of doing the match and man, helping that guy out to succeed. Um, it's really awesome, man. Helping others to succeed is a really, really positive benefit, benefit for your life and, you know, when you're, when you're too old to compete, be an awesome coach, man. Just go and help coach and help these guys to succeed. And, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of sad because I, I think that coaches don't get enough respect. And I'm not just talking about me. I don't, it's, it's cool. I don't really care all that much for me personally, but man, I see a lot of the competitors are all, it's all about me. I'm the one who done it. Well, that's sure. But you know, your instructor and your coach has helped you out a lot and you should never drown the man who teaches you how to swim so always have that a positive attitude and that's what I try to do with Professor Sauer is always keep a positive attitude I talk a lot too so <laughs> good man it's all, all, I actually really enjoy listening to uh, the people I talk with on the podcast every episode I find like I'm getting better without even uh, competing in jujitsu yet I take something sure person like it, it's really true and uh so far from what I, I like about you is when it is a tournament it's not time to to tap i like that mindset uh for mm -hmm. me and jared talk about this all the time on the show off the show is the mindset while competing uh it can't uh be blurred you know you got to have that killer instinct and that's what i'm trying yes. to yes and if i could interrupt you right here so i tell my guys i go hey it's the tournament time. You go out and you kick some ass, all right? It's about kicking ass. 
you know, you're not taking names. You're just going to beat the crap out of somebody. That's the goal. And I'll tell you this. If he won't tap, break his arm off. Bring it home to me. I always tell him, hey, go break his arm. Bring it to me. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I know it sounds vicious. Hey, man, that's what a warrior is all about, uh, you know. Um, but in training, in the studio, I can't have that attitude. If we're breaking off each other's arms, man, I'm not going to have any students. So that's where people always think that, oh, you know, Keith Owens always talking about tapping 10,000 times. And, yeah, it's tapping 10,000 times in your school so that you can keep your competitors, so that you can keep your guys, you know, and you can keep friendships, too. I'm going to tell you this. That's important in the school by just just tapping, uh, you know, instead of holding on making a guy hurt you or something like that. But I'm going to tell you this. At the tournament, it's kick-ass time. There's, there is no – and don't feel bad for that guy. He shouldn't be in there if he can't take it. All right? Now, I know that's harsh, but we're there to win. And that's our attitude when we go there. You know, people have this – people think, oh, we're so nice and gentle. And, yeah, we're – you know, when we're at a tournament, we're there to win, and that's what my guys do. And That's why we take a lot of gold medals because we're serious about it. So I hope that you're serious when you compete – just not so serious when you train at your school, man. It should be about fun, having a good time. I like um, that. If you could give one advice to all DJ uh, athletes, what would it what would it be? You think? If I could give one piece of advice to BJJ athletes, yeah, or coaches or something. <laughs> if I could give one piece of advice to BJJ athletes, um. Uh, you're going to have to take it up a notch or two in, in jiu-jitsu world. I, I'm going to say this. It, uh, you know, let's just take the Olympics, for instance, all right? And, and I want you to, to, to visualize this. You know, watch, go watch um, a program on Michael Phelps. That guy's in the freaking pool all the time. He's working out. He's working hard. Um, he'll spend eight hours a day in the pool, um, eating right, um, positive mental aspect. He's got his mental game all right. And I'm going to tell you this. Eventually, this is what it's going to take to be a champion. You're going to have to be working out eight hours a day on the mat. Now, I'm not saying rolling the whole time, but you're working on moves. Uh, you're exercising. You're getting into shape. Uh, you're taking the right supplements. Um, you know, you're, you're getting your mental game in order. That's super important, man. Your mental game is really more important than your physical game. You've got to have your mind right you got to have that positive expectation that you can win, not just in jiu-jitsu, but in life, too. I mean, you got to have this attitude that you can win. And if you don't have that attitude, you're not going to be a champion. Just don't, don't even try, man. Don't try. If you, if, you don't, if you can't bring the mental game, don't try. But you're going to have to be working out eight hours a day. You're going to have to have a great coach. You're going to have to be able to weight lift properly, have that kind of coach. That's what it's going to be in the next 20 years. I can see that. And if, if jiu-jitsu ever gets to the Olympics, it's going to be a Michael Phelps kind of situation where you're working out like that. So my advice to jiu-jitsu guys who are training want to be that world champion, that coveted world champion. Uh, and, you know, if I cared enough to train a world champion, we'd be training every day. We'd be putting at least five hours in every day, making that kind of commitment to be awesome and trying not to get him hurt, but working on his game and going over and repping things out and, working with different opponents and um, making sure that things are going well, you know, and uh, just, you know, I, I want to, you know, the, and this, I shouldn't even bring this up, but, you know, we talk about steroids and, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the, you know, a lot of guys are going to be doing steroids like that too. I mean, that's just something to get the upper hand and I don't necessarily agree with it, but, you know, People are going to be doing that, too. So you have to, you know, if they don't regulate that somehow, people are going to go, have to go to that level because, you know, everybody else is, too. So that's my, my advice is stay off that shit because it will wreck your liver and it will create a bad life for you later on. But just understand that in the future, that's what people are going to be doing. They're, if they're not doing it already, I, I, I'm not naming names or anything, but I see a lot of people are probably doing that kind of stuff, so. And it's, yeah, uh, you know, it's, Keith, real quick, do you think it will ever become an Olympic sport? I I don't think it's going to become an Olympic sport. I hate to say that, and I'm going to sound, you know, people are going to hammer me on that, but I think judo has been in there a long time, and 
uh, judo, you know, people combine that and say, oh, we already have judo, we don't need jiu-jitsu. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen at the Rio Games because they can do a, uh, I don't know, they get an event, I can't remember what it's called, but they get a, an event to be, a, you know, to showcase their sport. So if they're going to do it, it's going to be right there after that. I don't think Brazilian jiu-jitsu will be an Olympic sport. It's too bad because it's, it's completely awesome. I bet you MMA has a better chance of being an Olympic sport than in the future than BJJ if, if, if Rio doesn't take it on as a, as, as one of their sports. So that's what I think. I could be completely wrong. I'm, you know, not the first time, but. I don't think there's a lot of countries that can represent Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, that, that too. There's not enough countries, maybe, but definitely, I think uh, on a spectator side, uh, I think MMA uh, visually, obviously, is probably a lot more entertaining for uh, fans to watch. Yeah. Uh, completely, that is a completely awesome point that you bring up because it's much more exciting. It's much more cool. For the guys who, not are, who aren't into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is boring as hell. Yeah, it's, you know, just, it's like they don't they don't get it. They don't you know. It's like I don't want to sit here and watch this guy. I love watching it. That's the chess match of the whole thing. But you know, agreed, you're you know MMA is much more sexy than, than Brazilian <laughs> Jiu Jitsu. I think they should take you know I shouldn't say this and I should shut up. But you know a lot of times maybe you know judo should go or I mean we could find some. I gotta leave judo in. Throw something else out and bring Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in. You know, but. I, I just I just don't think it's I'm skeptical. Let me say that. Yeah, well, so. it's okay. To be skeptical. It, it hasn't happened yet, and it's really barely becoming a topic. Just just amongst a few BJJ people. Um, I got a question though. Gi or no gi? I think I. Gi or no gi? I say yes. My question. <laughs> is, what's better for a student to understand uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Because people love no gi. I mean, they start no gi. They don't even bother putting a komodo on ever. I I think that's ludicrous. And my I'm just really biased. But what what are you your thoughts? Um, let me say this. Uh, there's been a huge controversy about uh, gi no gi for the longest time. It's died down because people don't want to talk about it anymore. But personally, I like both. And man, um, for the last few weeks, we've been doing no gi here at my school. I mean, we we're been rolling no gi. It's, a lot of fun, but for a new student, man, you got to wear the gi. I, I totally convinced about that. Let me say this, you know, I love 10th planet jujitsu. I'm friends with a lot of the guys. I love, I love 10th planet. I, it's a lot of people are going to hate me now because I just said that. Um, but I think I stolen a lot of their moves and then I show it to BJJ guys and they're like, Oh, that is the coolest move ever. Yeah. I just stole it from, you know, 10th planet who supposedly hates gi. You know what? And if 10th planet hates the gi, cool. That's fine. It, it doesn't affect me whatsoever. I, uh, I know what works. And for a new guy to come in and start training, he should put on the gi. If you're an MMA fighter you should, and you want to learn your ground game, put the gi on. The gi slows you down. It's much more technical. Learn how to stop the chokes. When you take it off, I feel that all you need to do instead of pull is um, hug really tight. I, I, hug is not the word I want to use. Clinch really tight. You get tighter there and you work on that. But you, it's easy to transition from the gi to no gi. It's super hard to transition from no gi to the gi. I personally, I like to have the best of both worlds. I love the gi. I think it's um, so much fun. There's so many more moves that you can do with the gi as opposed to no gi. And uh, I'm just a guy who wants to have have it all. And I, I tell you this, my guys take off the gi. They're, they're pretty good. No gi guys, I don't see a problem. I mean, we win lots of medals, no gi, and you know, we, there could be these arguments, so forth and so on. But man, if if you would just put the gi on for a while, and then when you take it off, man, you don't have to worry about your neck, you don't have to worry about a lot of things, and you'll find yourself a lot more quicker, a lot more faster, a lot more seeing things that the no gi guy um, might necessarily not see. So uh, I don't care what anybody says. I think the gi is the way to go. I'm always going to do the gi. It's a lot of fun, and when I don't feel like doing the gi, I just take it off. And I practice my nogi, so uh, I'm completely cool with that. So, you know, whatever. And it's it's pretty, you know. And if a guy hassles me over that, fantastic. I know the truth. I know the truth. And so, I think the, uh, the gi is the way to go. You know, but nogi is the way to go too. You can't just be a gi guy and not do nogi. Man, take the gi off too. You should be able to do that too. So, 
I'm not saying, oh, you should always be doing the gi. I don't subscribe to that. I think you should do no gi a lot, man. It's a, it's a lot of fun. But you can do both is what I'm saying. I agree. Uh, I got a personal question for you. Uh, yep. I started off doing jiu-jitsu. Uh, mm-hmm. Now I'm Greco-Roman. Uh, do you think it'll help with the clinch, like like underhook, fighting for underhooks while doing jiu-jitsu? Um, will Greco-Roman help in Brazilian jiu-jitsu? What, with uh, you know, wrestling in general. Yeah, I think it'll help. I think wrestling will help in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, too. Um, you know, that's one of the things, if I were to criticize jiu-jitsu, is that the takedowns suck. You know, you need more, you know, that's where wrestling can help. I have a I have a wrestling coach in my school who's awesome, and he, he teaches uh, he teaches us takedowns, and it, I think it helps, to t- you know, that pull on that tightness, too. So, yeah, I think wrestling, Greco-Roman, those guys are badasses, man. Uh, I'll pick you up and slam you on your face, and that's cool. But when you get to the ground, you know you want to want to start playing your jujitsu game. That way you don't get hurt. That way you you know you least amount of force necessary. Uh, I agree. Did I answer your question? I don't know if I did, but uh, you did. <laughs> I just ramble. Uh, no, you answered it perfectly. Um, Thank you. For those that don't know, I I heard you once say the three T's. Uh, can you just repeat them? Because I, I, I kind of laughed because I, I think one of them was the same thing twice. Yeah. My, my three T's of jiu-jitsu, I called it. Uh, technical, tough, and technical. Okay, I thought that, so. That, those are my three T's. And guys, you know, have been, you know I, I get that all the time. People will, will say the three T's. Now, if I were going to change that last technical, I would change it to tenacious. So te- nice. technical and tenacious. If there were, if I were going to, but I value technicality, tech being technical uh, above, um, you know, above everything. And you know what, tough plays a huge role in it. And you know, we um, tough is a, can be a negative term in jujitsu, but I don't think so uh, because tough means that hey, I got, I've been on the bottom here for about thirty five minutes and I can't get out, and I'm still, I'm not tapping, and I'm going to keep going, and even though I'm being crushed, I'm going to keep on. Uh, uh, hanging in there and that's the test that you need to have, you know, to be patient, to get out. I agree. Um, I, I just want to get your, your take on this cause you've been in the, the game a long time. Uh, I know I, I read a, a blog of yours about uh, BJJ black belt should attend seminars. Uh, a mm-hmm. lot of them. Uh, with, I want to brush off from that, but do you feel I, I see it all the time. Tournaments, I get so excited to go. There's a black belt division. And then what ends up happening is there's no black belt showing up. Uh, a lot of people I find at the local scene, obviously not the, the big tournaments. Everyone wants that title, so they go compete. Smaller tournaments, uh, I find people are hiding behind the black belt a little too much because the loss might <laughs> reputation. What do you think? Oh, I totally agree with that. Um uh, you know, it's tough being a black belt, man. Let me, let me just say this. Um, there's a lot on the line, man, because we've, we've made the black belt to be so godlike. Once you're a black belt, you must be God. And geez, I don't feel like God. You know, I feel like I got some holes in my game that I need to work on and I need to get better. Um, I'm brave enough to say that too. Where, um, and that's, I guess that's my problem in life is I don't come off as I'm all invincible and I'm the, you know, super tough because you, you'll see, especially in the Brazilian culture, that kind of weakness is not to be shown. And so we got these guys that have to act tough all the time. And you get your black belt, supposedly you know everything, right? So you couldn't possibly go to a seminar and learn anything new. And I, this is my take, and I don't know if it's true or not, but um, I don't see many black belts at, at seminars, you know. And um, I'll tell you, the really smart guys are the ones that go to seminars, and they're the ones who know a lot of stuff because they're not afraid to take new moves. And there's so many awesome, cool moves that you can learn from any black belt. But the trouble is they don't want to go because they don't want to look, you know, they don't want to be there working out with their blue belt in a class, you know. And um, I just think it's completely wrong. It's a bad attitude. You know, you should be going to seminars, and I don't care what level of black belt you are. I even like brown belts, too. Brown belts are cool to learn from because they're just black belts that haven't got their belt yet. You know, they're still working, but they know a lot of cool moves, too. And I really enjoy working with brown belts, too, because I can pick up really awesome moves. And I'm a thief of jiu-jitsu. I, I'll steal a move from anybody. I'm cool with that. Um, but a lot of instructors are thieves, too. They just don't want to give anybody credit, and they don't want to, 
be seen to say, oh, I'm actually learning something new. Because now it's easy just to sit on the internet and learn your moves and not actually go to and give anybody any credit or anything like that. And so, so there have been a number of black belts that come to my seminars and they walk away going, wow, I learned a lot. And I really appreciate that because it shows that, you know, they're, they're willing to learn. And that's the key, man. You want to you want to be one of the great jiu-jitsu guys. Get all the knowledge you possibly can. Get it where you can. As far as competing goes, man, you don't want your ass kicked. You don't want to say, hey, um, I lost, you know. It's tough to put it on the line as a black belt. you got all your students watching. And I think it's just the opposite. Your students would like you to compete. Um, you know, I competed at the U.S. Nationals, I think it was, about three years ago. I thought that was fun. I lost on points. Uh, and, but, man, it was fun, and I'd like to do it again. i just been, you know, I'm super busy. But competing is not a bad thing, man, and black belts should do it too because it's such a good example. However, if people's self-esteem is low, they're a black belt. They don't want to show that maybe they could lose. I tapped out a lot of black belts just rolling with them and, you know, in private training, and I'll never tell who I tapped out. It doesn't matter. And you know what? I'm going to tell you this. I got tapped out by a number of black belts, too, and you just go, wow, that was cool. That was a lot of fun. It was like, who cares? We're just, you know, but they put so much on the line in their mind that they can't, they can't take a chance and just go do the tournament, man. Do, do you go think, with me and go try it. Do you think that's what's going Say that again. You think that's holding black belts back from their full potential? You know, I don't know. I don't know if it is, but it's it's definitely showing a side of their uh, character, of their self-esteem. Because if your self-esteem is good, losing is not the worst thing in the entire world. You know, that's not the worst thing. I mean, because winning, uh, to me, is a long-term endeavor. It's over the years that a winner develops. Yeah, you could go to a tournament and you lose, but what happens if you lose? Are you a loser? Well, you might be a loser just in that one instance, but overall, winning and losing are long-term concepts. I mean, I, so I, I have no problem. I've tapped plenty of times, like I say. i tapped it before, I'll tap again. And, you and I'll, you know, I would do a tournament. I, it's not a big deal. There's just a lot of training involved and a lot of time effort. Do I want to put that time in there? But to have it, make it a self-esteem issue, wow, I can't possibly lose. You know, one of the guys to me that that I, I want to say who I really admire as far as training, well, two people, uh, Hanata Tavares, uh, small guy, man, he is buff. That guy goes and he trains hard and he goes to kick ass and he's like a warrior. And uh, his student, Pete Wilhelm, who, um, you know, just a couple small dudes with big, huge hearts, they love to compete. Those guys have lost. They came in second. They don't care. They just want to keep on trying, you know, and. And that's, that's, I believe, um, what a BJJ warrior should be. So you go lose. So what? And if your students are like, oh, you lost. You lost the match. Well, I mean, welcome. You get in there, too, and you'll see that you'll lose the match, too. We're all going to lose something. But, but winning is a long-term endeavor. So those two guys are exciting competitors, and it's cool, man. And, you know, a lot of people lose, and they get all sad and frustrated and mad. And everything. just get back in there, man. Quit being an emotional puss. That's what I'm trying to say. Be tough. Be tough emotionally. Get back in there, man. You're going to lose some. So what? Over the long term, you'll win more than you ever lose. Okay. And let me say this. Too. Yeah, see, I'm getting, all, I'm getting all on my high horse. But, you know, I'm a fan of baseball. And a lot of people hate baseball. That's cool. Again, I don't care. But baseball is a technical game. And, you know, a lot of baseball teams, they win 500 and they lose 500. So half the games, they lose. Well, hell, man. What kind of, you know, in jiu-jitsu, you win way more than the baseball players do, but you don't see them freaking out. Losing is part of the game, you know. You just got to, you know, hang in there, keep on grinding it out. And, you know, the guys who are the champions are the ones that are in the 600 range. Wow, impressive, you know. And we could do baseball analogies all the time, but, man, just because you lose a match or somebody taps you out, and so what, man? And if, if guys are like that, you don't want them as your fans. You don't. I mean, because the minute you lose, they'll just go on to somebody else. You see that in MMA all the time. So, okay, I'm off my high horse now. No, I I agree with you, and uh, it's it's well put. One thing I was actually really excited to ask you, because you've had the years put in the sport, uh, things kind of go and come back and trend. Was there anything that you were doing in the 
uh, I know you started in the 90s. So the 90s or early 2000s that you've seen come back in full effect. Did you ever pull off a, a deep half sweep or anything crazy or a Baron Bolo? Or has there been any that kind of seems popular lately that you were doing a long time ago? You know, I, I want to tell you this. I, when I started in jiu-jitsu, and this is going to show how, how old I am doing this, I remember the times where people go, hey, I want to show you this new move. This is a really cool move. It's called Spider Guard. And people were doing Spider Guard. And you go, well, and, and now Spider Guard, what? Every, I mean, geez, you're blue, right? you know what Spider Guard is. I mean, somebody just probably showed you, right? And over the years, man, all these new guards keep coming in. All these new, new guards keep coming in. And um, I... I just see that once they're, once they're created, I mean, they stay there. I don't see things going away. You know, we get the latest and greatest and that is completely cool. You know, I remember when X guard first started making its way onto the scene and oh, X guard, that's the coolest thing. The problem is here's what guys do. Guys go, Oh, I, I got a great way to beat X guard. And then they do it and they go, and seriously, people were saying that, that De La Hiva guard was dead. The De La Hiva guard's dead. The, Butterfly guard is dead. I, why? Because we've got ways to defeat it. And it's not true. I mean, you know, so in the sense of I'm seeing new things all the time, but things never leave, man. And you should have seen when I first started, man, there was closed guard and there was open guard. And, man, we've had such great um, – people are coming up with such great moves. So Baron Bolo, great, man. That's fantastic, you know. And people would disagree in self-defense. Oh, should – you know, you don't need the Baron Bolo because you can get punched in the face, and you're not going to see you're not going to see X guard too much in MMA. That's cool. I'd like to know I'd like to know all those moves. That's cool. I want to know them. But um, I think today BJJ is so much better than it was when I first started that I I don't see anything coming back. I don't see anything leaving. You know, everybody still keeps it all into their game. You know, so the Baron Bolo will be sticking around. It's a pretty cool move. Kind of difficult to do, but. You know, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. So I don't know if I answered that question. I just say, I don't know. I haven't seen anything that actually leave to come back, you know, except maybe a Tom McGee's. <laughs> <laughs> so last question, Jared, Jared's going to ask this the last question. Then we're going to close it down with you saying some final words. Do you okay. think, is Hickson the greatest, do you think? If Hickson, no, Elio Gracie is the greatest. Um, and I, I want to say this too, Carlos Gracie is the greatest. The, the, the brothers, the Gracie brothers are the greatest because without them, without Carlos, without Elio, without the other brothers, I mean, um, we wouldn't have Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So is he the greatest fighter that has ever lived? Uh, I think that Hickson Gracie is the, one of the greatest fighters that has ever lived. He's um, a very unique human being, and um, he, when I think of a master, I think of, of Hickson and his students, um, Professor Pedro Sauer, I think of him as a master as well, but just two different kinds, two different kinds of masters, you know, but, uh, you know, I think Hickson uh, should get some credit well-deserved, and you know who I think gets, should get some credit? I think Hoyce Gracie, Horion Gracie should get some credit, too, for bringing jiu-jitsu to america too so um I, I don't know in what concept we're talking greatest but if we're talking greatest fighter you damn right hicks and gracie needs to be up there you know and we can argue about that but but man i don't think the gracies get enough credit and uh but and, and you know we have this fight between the carlos and elio gracie side and i just have equal respect for both of those guys i mean they're man i'm so thankful that they did what they did and i'm so thankful that Horion brought uh, jiu-jitsu to America so that I could have the opportunity to learn. And, you know, Hoyce Gracie getting into that ring and, and fighting, man. That's cool. Uh, they weren't going to let Hickson go into that ring because he would have beat the crap out of everybody. Um, but, you know, let me say this, and then, and then I'll be quiet here. I don't personally think Hickson did all that he could have been capable of. Now, that's going to sound like I'm criticizing him, but, man, I just feel that events in his life I think maybe shortened his career a little bit that some tragic events that I don't really want to go into, but, um, man, you know, he is to me the greatest fighter. And I think to a lot of people, but he still had plenty of career left and, and, and he, um, 
he would have killed everybody. He'd have beat the shit out of everybody. Just letting you know, he's he's that bad of a of a man. So that's what I've always heard. There, there's the wrong answer. I like it though. I I, I always heard everyone says you don't understand how good it 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 actually bothers me when I hear it because I really want to find out how good you know I'm one of those people that want to know like I have to see it type of thing or experience <laughs> but uh Keith final words with you uh let people know you have your own school in Idaho how can they reach yeah. you find out more about you train with you uh basically you know I know you got Twitter just air it out let everyone know uh final yep. words well, it, you please come to Idaho, Boise, Idaho. I don't know if there, very many people get over here. Great city. Idaho is a great state. Um, you know, if you want to come and train, please come on by to look me up. Uh, if you're a knucklehead, please don't bother. Uh, we only want good technical guys coming and training with us. So uh, we have a cool school. We open arms to everybody. We we enjoy people showing up, and we don't mind tapping either. I mean, you know, we're, guys come in and tap. All our guys, we're cool with that. We just want to train, so... That's cool. People can reach me. I have several websites. Um, BJJmoves.com. That's BJJmoves.com. Lots of videos out. Uh, put in a plug for Submissions 101. Man, if go to Submissions 101. Watch free videos, man. Get more info. Heck, it's completely awesome. Awesome website. And uh, you can reach me on Facebook, too. If you got a Facebook page, man, hit me up and be my Facebook friend. Love talking to people. And I, I kind of think I'm one of the only jujitsu guys that actually, re, you know, re, do, does replies, man. Seems like a lot of black belts are just, you know, oh, I can't reply to a lowly blue belt. I reply to people all the time, man. Got questions, just ask me. I try to reply. I love helping people. So I appreciate you letting me on your podcast, and I apologize for my tardiness in getting on here today. I'm usually not like that. Couldn't get my phone to work. Oh, it's all right, Keith. Uh, I would like to personally thank you for taking some time out. Uh, I know you're a busy man. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, dropping knowledge. I'm, I'm sure the listeners also appreciate it. Uh, it's unreal. Um, I'm actually kind of sad. We got to wrap it up now, but uh, we'll keep in touch for sure. And Good. Uh, thank you very I love much. your Twitter page too, man. Awesome Twitter page you got. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch soon. All right. Thanks, sir. Have a good night. You bet. Bye-bye. Bam. So, Jared. Hello. Name one thing real quick. What did you take away from Mr. Keith Owen? Man, a lot of things. A lot. <laughs> Do you feel bad tapping now? No, not really. I don't have a problem with it. You know, I think it's part of learning. There you go. I so, think everybody said that. So, I agree. But he, he's adamant about it, and I loved it. Yeah, he's very uh, straightforward. You know. Real, not real talk. talk. Next week, we'll be back. Me and Jared. We'll have a, a brand new episode. I'm leaving in New York tomorrow, guys. Wish me a, a fun trip. Uh, shout outs to uh, Josh Crippens and uh, Clockwork BJJ. I'll be stopping by there and uh, training. I'll have a cool story. Uh, I'm only going to do one class. I'm only there for like four days. So uh, that's where I'm heading tomorrow. So, uh, you know, right when I get back, I'm ready to do this podcast again, man. I freaking love Tuesdays. Where are you going? New York City. Where? I should have told you at the start of the show, but train, train. clockwork BJJ. Um, so get ready. I'm coming to America, just like Eddie Murphy did back in the 80s. So uh, that's it. Jerry, what do you want to say anything? Uh, nah. Hang tight. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep that tradition going. All right, guys. Have a good night. Remember, uh, like our Facebook page. That's my ending. Later.